Hello, this is Dr. Mike, and I want to begin today our lecture for the course in ethics and to introduce the subject to you, and hopefully uh, we can gain some great things that will help us in our in our studies. This is a course that uh, I took when I was 18 years old. I was a, my minor was in philosophy and religion. My major was psychology. And to be quite honest with you, as a young person, I did not uh, get a whole lot out of it. I went back 30 years later to finish that degree, and I was 50, and I got much more out of it. So this is something that uh, it's good to be exposed to. There'll be a lot of things you can think about, function with. There'll be other things that you kind of put on the shelf and wait for experience to catch up, and one day you'll realize uh, a lot more than, than maybe you will today. I do want you, I do encourage you to read the text and to um, – uh, it's a, the text is difficult to read. This philosophy is very difficult to read many times. But I want you to at least make the effort. You're better for having been exposed to the materials. And so let me encourage you to read the text and also to listen to the TED Talks that go with each chapter. Uh, these are different voices um, that I want you to be exposed to. So that all you, you just don't get my opinion, but you realize that there are other people out there that, that talk about these things. And maybe it's a point that will help you give, get greater understanding. You're going to listen to a, a Muslim imam. Uh, you will listen to a Buddhist priest. You will listen to the Pope. Uh, a lot of people that speak on ethical issues uh, that will go along with what we're talking about with that chapter. So let me encourage you to every day try to read what the chapter, because we're covering pretty much a chapter a day during this uh, nine-week session. And it's important for you to stay up with the reading. Don't get behind. Also, listen to the TED Talk, and then, of course, the lectures, and those things together will form the basis of your understanding uh, of what ethics is all about. Uh, ethics is a branch of philosophy. As I said, I was majoring in philosophy and religion the first time that I had an ethics course. But we study moral principles and moral values uh, that serve to help us to understand how we are in the world. Uh, human beings are the only animals on the planet that uh, think about thinking and think about why we are the way we are. Animals don't generally, at least we don't understand them to have morals or our thought processes on the level that we do as humans. But these thought processes govern our human behavior, how we act, how we conduct ourselves, how we conduct our lives. And you've had some great examples, no doubt, in your life. When you look at your grandparents, you look at your parents, maybe, or you look at your pastor or someone else, they have great examples of what it means to lead a good life and a moral life. We'll examine questions about what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, uh, what is just and unjust, what uh, seeks to provide, a, it, we seek to provide some kind of systematic framework for evaluating human actions and human decisions. Uh, we all see people every day that make bad decisions. And uh, why is that? Because maybe their ethics are faulty. Maybe they didn't have the upbringing uh, that we've had or otherwise. So usually, you know, our, we, we're either very strong morally, strong ethically, or we can be rather weak. And so here are some reasons that I want to share with you why I believe that studying ethics is important. As I've said already, it provides a framework for decision making. Uh, when we study ethics, we provide it ourselves with a set of guidelines to help us make ethical decisions when we face difficult decisions. This week, you're going to be developing your own framework of ethics in one of the exercises. That's going to prove to be very important to you because maybe you've never done that before. Maybe you've never sat down and, and listed the things that were non-exceptional, uh, the, the, the line you won't cross in your life. Uh, in some classes, I talk about it, uh, abortion, for instance. People feel very, very, uh, very strongly about abortion, good and bad. And so when that's the case, I used to say to them, if they're going to be nurses, uh, don't go to work in the abortion clinic. Does it make sense? If your ethic is that you're very strongly anti-abortion, why would you conflict your psyche by working in a place where your ethics are compromised every day. It causes psychological problems. It causes a disconnect. So you want to work in a place that matches somewhat the ethics that you believe in, honesty, integrity, 
transparency, all the things that, that go into making you who you are, you want to kind of work in those environments because you're going to be working for some 40 years in the, in the work world. You don't want to have to sell your soul to the devil every day that you go to work and work in a place that, that conflicts you. People that, places that are dishonest, places that are, you know, don't have the same moral values. It's important. Secondly, we study ethics because ethics promote critical thinking. Studying uh, ethics requires us to think critically about moral issues and to examine the reasoning behind those beliefs. And this will help you greatly. Think about why you believe as you write your ethics paper. Why is it that you believe certain things? Oh, you're honest. Where did you get your honesty from? Maybe it was your grandmother. Maybe it was your grandfather. Maybe it was your daddy, your mother. Uh, my own dad was so honest that if he got a quarter too much change in a transaction, he would drive all the way back to town. That was a small deal. We lived out in the country. It was a 10 or 15 mile trip to town, but he would not sleep with someone else's money in his pocket at night. Thirdly, ethics promote personal growth and studying ethics can help you develop a more informed, a more reflective approach on your behavior and lead to personal growth and self-improvement. That's what we're all about. It's about education. I often say that what troubles me is that you might get a degree uh, in as a nurse or whatever and go out in the world and you got the piece of paper, but you did not get the education. It's of vital importance that you get the knowledge that you're here to earn. That's what you're paying for. Uh, you're paying for me to share my knowledge with you of life and the, the subject matter. And you can't short you can't short change that. You can't do you can't just not listen to the tapes or read the text and pat maybe you're good at passing a test. Some people can do that. But then you get out of here and you don't have the education and you end up losing jobs. It's always somebody else's fault. It's the school's fault, it's the teacher's fault. So you really want to learn to think critically. There is a sense that that word is kind of an open-ended word, uh, but it's very important. The thing critically means that you can reflect on things. You're going to reflect on lots of things as you write different discussion boards and papers throughout these weeks. It causes you to think about them. And it's always good to spend time thinking before you're, before you're writing. That's a good thing. Number four, ethics have practical applications. And you may not readily see this, but studying ethics can help you understand how to navigate through ethical issues in various professions like medicine or law or business, where all these things come into play. You do not want to work in a business that is unethical in their dealings that steal from their clients that do all those things because it reflects upon you. It challenges your psyche. It makes you feel uh, somehow dirty. So. It's important that you uh, that you understand that. So ethics then is that moral branch of philosophy where we where we think about our reasoning patterns and where we think about the things that we hold to be true and whether they are you know whether we're living up to them or not. When you don't live up to your own morals, uh, then you start having you know personal problems that you have to deal with. I'm not in this chapter going to go through every detail because I want you to read the book, but I wanted this. Hit some highlights. You have a copy of the slides. This is how the chapter is broken down. But we study ethics mainly because there are different views of what's morally right and morally wrong. These things are not always easy to judge. It's not hard. It's not easy to say, well, this is always right, always wrong, because it, there is some sense in which that is subjective. There are things that you might hold to be wrong for you that I would not, uh, you know, believe the same thing. A great example of that would be drinking alcohol. Uh, I have been, a, I was a Baptist pastor for 20 years. Uh, Baptists are traditionally teetotalers. They don't drink alcohol and take a very dim view of alcohol. Uh, I don't drink myself, but I don't press my values onto someone else uh, because as long as you do it in moderation, I think moderation is the issue, not, not indulgence, not becoming an alcoholic, not, not paying your bills, all the things that kind of go along with being an alcoholic, but you you can drink socially or whatever as long as you're very careful. The, the one thing I've learned from the Buddhists that I really appreciate is called the middle way, the moderation. 
you should not be on the extremes for anything. That includes eating. Uh, eating was listed as a cardinal sin. And I think we're all probably guilty of that. It, it's just as much as alcohol, smoking, anything else we can do to our bodies, we're killing ourselves. My aunt calls it digging our grave with our mouth. There's a lot to be said for that. Uh, but, you know, in moderation, food's a wonderful thing in moderation. Alcohol can be a decent thing in moderation. So we're looking at this set of values and principles that we hold as individuals or as groups. And we have, this is a branch of a philosophy called moral philosophy. Uh, and we ask philosophical questions about a lot of different things. You can do it about artwork and even. But normative ethics, we talk about what is good, what is just, what is right. And then in meta-ethics, we talk about questions of the nature of ethics and how different uh, these things come about. So when we talk about ethical evaluation, ethical terms, there are a lot of different terms that we need to think about. They're important. Uh, we're exploring moral principles and values that underlie human behavior. Uh, other types of evaluation include, you know, factual evaluation, determining the facts of a situation are important, and then aesthetic evaluation, examining the beauty or the artistic value of something. These are all part of what we think of when we think of ethics, and so we're going to do that. There are some important ethical terms that, that will be helpful to you. Um, these are the idea of right and wrong. Uh, is it everything? Is it is there black and white in that or do we have a lot of gray area that probably will be determined by a lot of things in your life but there are some things we, we have a lot of gray area between what's right what's wrong things that are good and bad uh, are obligatory we're obligated to do them or it's permissible for us to do them uh, let me give you an example of that as a pastor I'm not sure what kind of background you might come from but where I come from in South Carolina a pastor uh, walks a very tight road as far as his example and his testimony in the community. If you were to see me coming out of a liquor store one day as your pastor, the first thing that came to your mind would be, well, maybe you went in to talk to that person about coming to church. It would be that he's there buying alcohol. Of course, as I told you, my church doesn't allow drinking, so it'd be a scandal. I'd probably lose my job over something like that. It would be permissible for me to drink. There's nothing uh, obligatory about my my stand, but it's just a matter of testimony that, that doesn't look good for me as a pastor of a, of a Baptist church. So you can apply that in your own world, to your own set of, of values or whatever. There are things you ought to do, things you ought not to do. Those are all uh, technical, ethical terms that we, that we think about. We use those when we reason or we debate with someone about views or things that we talk about. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had a co-worker where you get in the process of debating or discussing something that you disagree with, and it's always, well, I feel this, I feel that, I feel this. It, it's not easy to um, come to a conclusion about that. You have to have some facts and some things to go along with it that will help. So we talk about moral values, that is, principles or standards that are considered to be morally right or morally wrong. We talk about ethical principles, that is, fundamental rules that guide us in ethical behavior. Uh, we talk about rights, those are legal or moral entitlements that we have. And then we talk about duties, those are obligations that we have, that are things that we ought to do. We have, a, we have a duty to pay our taxes. That is our obligation. We have a duty to take care of our children, take care of our family. And so these are all things that we reason when we think about Many of you are going to school for that purpose. You are going to school to be able to take care of your children, give your family a better life, to pay your bills, maybe to have a new house or whatever it is. Those are all obligations. You're working for that. You can't lay, lay things down and expect someone else to do that for you. That's about reasoning. Ethics and reasoning are closely related. Any ethical reasoning involves the use of rational thinking to evaluate moral issues. So, when you're confronted with something morally, uh, you, you go through this process of seeing how rational it is. And these important ethical theories will include a lot of different things that you'll look at if you look through this, this chapter. Uh, one of those is called Dentonology. It's an ethical theory that emphasizes the importance of following 
moral rules and duties regardless of their consequences. Do right if the stars fall. Uh, you cannot do wrong and, and be successful because you'll be caught up in things that carry you along. A lot of our young people do that. They get in with the wrong crowd. They get carried along with things that are not right, and they end up paying a very high price for that. And so when we think about that, the importance of following the rules and duties, moral rules and duties, then we don't have to pay for it in the end. There's an interesting verse in the Bible that says, whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So you realize that you're sowing in your life and you're going to reap some bad things if you're doing things that that don't uh, match your own morals. That's what I'm trying to say. There's another term in the, in the chapter you look at called utilitarianism. Uh, that basically is a theory that says the importance of maximizing overall happiness and well-being. In politics, it means to do the, the, the most good for the most people, basically. So that's why most moral guidelines are set up in order to do the most good for as many people in the society as you can. For instance, if you are, um, we, have a, we have a law that you shouldn't kill. We start with the Ten Commandments. Look at those Ten Commandments. The basis of our law in the West is those Ten Commandments. Uh, you shouldn't kill. You shouldn't steal. Uh, those are general for everybody. It is wrong to kill another human being. We can't be happy living in a lawless society. Look at what's going on in the last few years in our society with all the killings and the police issues that we've had. How does that make you feel when you go out at night, especially if you are a minority? Uh, you feel somehow apprehensive or it's dangerous or you know that you don't you don't want to be put in situations where you might be in danger. A utilitarian approach would be we need to make as many people feel safe as we possibly can. Uh, then there are virtue ethics. Virtue ethics are an ethical theory that emphasizes the importance of developing virtuous character traits such as courage or honesty or comparison. In week two, you're going to be writing about virtues, where they come from. Those are things you want to uh, develop in your children. You want them to be honest. You want them to be obedient. If you don't teach virtues to your children, then they grow up to be lawless and running the streets in prison and probably going to be dead before they're too old because we fail to teach them virtues and things that help them function in society. Then there are care ethics, that an ethical theory that emphasizes the importance of caring for others and maintaining relationships. We are a relationship-oriented people. We don't function well as loners, even though there's some in our society who are. But look at what they get into. They get into things out on the periphery somewhere. They come in and shoot the place up, shoot up a school, shoot up a Walmart, whatever. Many of those people are without any kind of human contact. So in care ethics, we worry about taking care of other people. And I'm, I'm sure that, that we could all recite stories of people that we're taking care of. I mean, I cared for my mother for 13 years with Alzheimer's. It might be a neighbor. It might be someone else in the family. So that's really important. So in conclusion, what I want you to note is that ethics can be taught. Uh, you're going to look at different philosophers from, from Hume's work, his treatise on ethics as you read the chapter. You're going to look at him. You're going to look at Stevenson and different aspects of, of, uh, of ethics. But it can be taught as it involves developing a systematic approach to evaluating moral issues. However, ethics education has to go beyond just simply learning moral rules and principles it has, to it has to involve critical thinking, skills, and the ability to apply ethical principles in a real-world situation. So those are the kind of things that we're going to be talking about in this course. Each week, you're going to have a case study in which you will apply what you're learning to real-world situations. Uh, and how do you do that? So you will reason your way through that to understand that ethical reasoning has a great deal to do with our lives and our well-being and how we function. And then how do we apply that? Uh, it, it's got to be more than just a textbook and a set of rules. So hopefully this will be a course you will find interesting. I'm always available for questions. I'm available for comments. I can set up a Zoom call 
and uh, we can uh, we can discuss it further. But I hope you will get involved in the course. The more you get involved, the more that you will will gain from what we're talking about. So when we get to the end of the nine weeks, hopefully you will have a great uh, foundation from which you can work. Thank you for listening. And as you read your text today, listen to the TED Talks, begin to work on your exercises. If you have any issues, please let me know how I can, how I can be of help to you. Thank you.